Hi everyone, I'm Speedy from Magic Item Tech. Long time no see. Welcome to Game Development Vlog Episode 9. Last month was rather chaotic for me, filled with a lengthy Easter vacation, followed by a nasty flu forcing me to stay in bed for almost a week, and generally not much progress on I am overburdened. That is why I had no energy and not much drive to write new posts or to create video log entries, but I'm back among the living now. This does not mean there was no progress at all. There was a lot actually, but the development entered its last stage where there are a zillion small tasks left to be done, but no modifications are substantial. The notorious last 10% which takes 90% of the development time. I go through all the changes made in a few th sentences, then I will show some recent gameplay footage and lay down my plans when and how am I going to push this game through its finish line. I completed all the monsters from the easiest pawns up until the final boss. Their attributes are not balanced yet, but all their names, sprites and basic settings are done. Each and every one has its own corpse graphic and unique sound effect too. This last beast was originally flagged as a nice to have addition, but after trying out the game with a few monsters having its own sound and carcass, there was no turning back. The battles and item skills were lacking visually, so I decided to apply some cosmetics. I implemented a simple system to flash in and out various sprites at given coordinates in the dungeon on top of the entities. I was pleasantly surprised with the effectiveness of the initial results. Since then I added configurable opacity easing in and easing out, plus timings to the mix. Now item usage and battles are really shiny. Another set of crucial visual cues missing from the game were notifications. Many pickups and events yield varying results in a roguelike, and yes, a player can figure out how much gold was picked up, but it is so much nicer if the game helps a little with these, especially when important changes occur. Clearly when it does not fit the style it's not necessary, but I am overburdened is not a super serious game. Of course this can be overdone, but I tried making them not too obtrusive. Both the effect system and the notification system is accessible by the item skills, so various reactive spells can trigger these two. 103 unique items, each and every one having a unique sprite. All the graphics are done, with around 50% of the item lore finalized, and it was a hell of a lot of work. Sadly something I underestimated again. Making the graphics was not difficult, but coming up with unique, interesting or funny concepts, skills and short descriptions after having around 75 piece already was tough. The last mile became a grueling laborious crawl. When a lot of great content is already in place and almost every single archetype is taken, it becomes ridiculously hard to come up with new ideas hitting the same quality bar. After all, I think I achieved my goal in creating intriguing handcrafted loot, one may serve as a strong hook for the game. So I'm proud of the end result. I really don't want to spoil too much, that is why I'm only showing a small selection of sprites. Sorry but you have to play the game for more. In Operation Creep I hardcoded some strings, rendering the game impossible to be fully localized without code modification. Silly me, what a big mistake that was. Some buyers actually asked about how they could do translations. I felt really ashamed while answering those mails. I may fix this in the near future. For I am overburdened, I've already built a system which allows to bind assets for specific culture codes and all the strings are read from asset files too. There are no major limiting factors now, so technically the game could be localized to any language and even culturized without modifying the application. I know some languages are super hard to handle, for example right to left ones or the ones with huge glyph sets, but the point is that it is feasible now. Since I don't have the budget to pay for professional translations, only English and Hungarian will be done for the release. Sorry about that, but if the game does well, this is something that is high on my list. I'm also thinking about making some videos about the underlying technology of it. We'll see. The in-game user interface for the game is pretty much complete. Some finishing touches are missing here and there, but it is already pleasant looking and almost fully functional from the health bar all the way to the item pickup pop-ups. I dislike making menus because they are usually boring to design and program. 
For Operation Creep, I came up with the idea of creating a screen in the screen look to make it more interesting and alleviate this feeling while working on it. You navigated the menus of a retro looking computer and the whole frame of the machine was wrong. It blitted the maps on the level selection screen in awful four colors and all the cozy stuff like that. It worked for me and it worked for the game too. I tried a non-traditional approach again, but menus are still boring. Since it is a classic trope to have a city in action RPGs and roguelikes, where you return to from time to time, I thought about including one in I am overburdened. The idea did not align well with its mechanics, so I decided to make it the main menu. You move around in an inn, interacting with people and objects there to enter specific parts of the game. Talking with the innkeeper lands you on a help screen, poking a bookshelf shows the settings, leaving the inn exits the game and the trapdoor starts the actual dungeon crawling. If a player gets lost, escape will bring up an ordinary focus driven menu. It is far from complete, but the skeleton is there and some parts are already working. Here is some footage of the game at its current state to showcase all these updates. I've been talking about this open version thingy for ages and still haven't released it. In my original plans I wanted to have the full game completed by now. For the most part it is, but some planned content and finalization is still missing. There comes a time when one has to say stop, because it's really easy to get caught up working on a project and continue adding features for ages, and I think it is here. From now on I will only focus on wrapping the whole thing up, and this starts with putting out the beta version. I will prepare some marketing materials beforehand, like store page graphics and texts, maybe even a teaser trailer, so it may take a few days, but there will be a download link for it in the next entry. You can follow or track the progress of the game on regular contacts, always open for questions, comments and critique, please leave them below the video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.